Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren and welcome to my everyday makeup routine. This video has been so highly suggested since I started my YouTube channel in 2019 and I can't believe it's taken me four years of being on YouTube. I'm really, really excited. I am going to be deep diving into every single product I use. I'm also going to be telling you any dupes that I have found that I like a little bit better. And I'm also going to be telling you some products that I use here and there. It may not be part of my everyday routine, but I feel like everyone's everyday makeup routine changes just a little bit depending on what kind of vibe and what kind of event and day you're about to have. As always, I'll be linking everything down below for you so you can shop and get your makeup goodies. I absolutely loved watching these videos when I was younger, so being able to sit down in my apartment and being able to film for you is such a blessing and kind of like full circle moment. I also want to say that the sun is setting right now. I'm kind of chasing the sun. I thought it was going to get brighter, but it was just a very gloomy day here in New York. So once it gets a little bit dark, I will still have lighting here, but the lighting is going to be changing throughout this video. Hopefully I'm going to be giving you an insight, maybe give you a few tips and tricks that you may not know and show you how I do my makeup every single day and how I do it for my videos. I'm so happy y'all clicked on this video. Let's get going and do our makeup. First things first is I have my eye masks. These are my favorite ones. I get them on Amazon. They're super duper cheap. I have splurged on better eye masks in the past. And honestly, I really haven't been able to tell a difference. So these are always my go-to. Also drinking my little Kimade Alani New. I got sent a case of these and I have been drinking them way more than what I should. No, no need to worry, no need to worry. But a lot of the time before I do my makeup, I like to do my eye mask if I've had a long night. I didn't go to bed until 5 a.m. last night because I was up editing. So I did decide to put these little guys on. So that's why I have them. Don't do them every day, but something I do every day is ice roll. I do love this one. Now this one is kind of expensive. You don't need this expensive of a one, but if you do want to splurge, I know that the holidays are coming up. If you want to add this to your wish list, this is definitely one that I would suggest. This is the Skinny Confidential, and I want to say this is like 60 or $70. Like, it's very expensive. Going to be completely transparent, I got this sent to me, and that's why I am using it, but I have bought a lot of the cheaper Amazon ones online for my friends and family, and they work just as well. I have used those in the past. I just really, really love this one because this one is like metal or like stainless steel or something of the sort, but I naturally have just like a very puffy, like rounder face. I've talked about this in the past. Like, one of my biggest insecurities, I guess, is my face shape. It always has been like ever since I was a little girl Like I always knew that my face shape wasn't the same as like everyone else's growing up So this is something that helps my skin just like deep puff and kind of relieve some of that Look that I don't really prefer on my skin. I also just got done being on my period So during my period also, it's like really puffed up. I normally do this like all the way down my neck feels so good, especially if you're doing your makeup in the morning. It obviously is not morning. It is the evening when I have a date night. So that is what I am getting ready for right now. I also do it right over my eyeballs and I do hold it just like a minute under my eyes. Also in the morning, I do my gua sha. I am planning on doing more of like my everyday skincare routine, like my morning and night routines for my skin because I feel like the skin is very, very important on like makeup application. Right now, my face is completely clean. I do not have anything on my face besides some of that like serum from the under eyes. I will be telling you my two favorite moisturizers to put on underneath my makeup. These also have two different price points. So this one is my go-to. This is what I use every single day. I I use this morning and night and I felt like it was a little bit too thick when I lived in Alabama. It's a very, very heavy formula, but now that it is turning winter and I'm in a colder climate being in New York City, this is my go-to. This is the CeraVe Moisturizing Cream and I'm going to be using this today in the video, but this is another really great one. This is the Tarte Drink of H2O Hydrating Boost. I think it's really important to have a good moisturizer on your face before you get going. It really just like sets the tone for everything thing but my favorite is the CeraVe and like this tub is huge like I don't even know how long I've had this but I have had it for a long little bit also everyone welcome back Nick he is back from his vacation. He was gone for a little bit. So I was editing my videos all by myself. Nick is my part-time editor. Normally he edits like one video a week for me and it helps my workload and my stress and me not get burnout. So I'm happy to have him back. 
for this video. I always blend it down my neck. And as you're probably noticing, my neck and my hands are a different color than my face. And that's because I do self tan. And sometimes I do put tanning drops on my face. Last night I did. So it's not a huge drastic difference with the coloring, but I do correct it with my makeup. I just prefer to do it that way. Another thing to prep is obviously my primer. I have gone through a lot of primers. I really haven't found one that I have fallen in love with, but I do normally tend to lean towards the more expensive primers. This is from Benefit. This is the Professionals, and I use this all throughout like high school, like right when I first started doing makeup. I start with about like that little dollop, like a pea size amount, and I really focus it in on my nose and right around my lips, because that's where I notice my pores most, and I also notice my makeup kind of not staying around there, as well as right along my hairline and my forehead, just making sure I get this all over. This is a very very, very creamy consistency and base. This may be an unpopular opinion, but I like to use my setting spray in several different steps. One of which being right now, this is a really great setting spray I found. It's from Morphe. It's the Continuous Setting Spray, and this is so good. It's really inexpensive compared to like the Urban Decay ones, which I really, really love, but sometimes I just don't want to pay the price point. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this all over my face. It also smells really good too. So that is the first time I'm gonna be using this. I go through setting spray a lot because I feel like it's important to set everything. Another thing I love doing and I feel like is very important before starting your makeup is moisturizing your lips. So these are my two favorite products that I have found for my lips. I think that it's very important to focus in on your lips because if your lips are dry, if they're like needing some moisture, you're gonna be able to tell that at the end when you're applying your lipstick. So these are my two favorites. I already just applied this right before I started the video. This is actually a new brand that I just discovered during New York Fashion Week. This is Image Skincare or Medic Balancing Lip Enhancement Complex. I have this one and I also have one that's pink. I'll link both of them down below for you. And then this one is the Tula Lip SOS Lip Treatment. Y'all know I am a big Tula girly. I love Tula. I think they're great. Like a lot of their products are great. So definitely moisturize your lips beforehand. The final step in the prepping of your skin is this. This is my Gold Glow and Get It Cooling and Brightening Eye Balm. Even when I'm not wearing my makeup, I will still Still put this on like underneath my eyeballs. I think it really helps brighten up your eyes. Just rub it right underneath there. Normally I go in one more time. It really just brightens it up. It makes it look really great. A really, really great product. I've also tried the Rose Glow and Get It and I've tried that as well. This is just what I have in stock in my apartment. And with that, we are ready start our makeup. For application, I go between using a very big beauty blender. Y'all have commented on my beauty blender before and I know she's big. She's a mammoth, of course. But I also go between this one too. This is the It Brushes. It's apparently for Ulta, but it's Airbrush Blurring Foundation number 101. I really don't know if you care about the brushes I'm using, but this is just the one I use. It's very dirty. I definitely should have cleaned my brushes before this. Um, let me be a testament and please like wash your brushes. So sometimes I do go in with this Jones Road. It's like a shimmer face oil if I'm wanting more of a glowy look. Tonight I'm not really going for that. So I'm not going to be putting that on. But I did want to show you this product. I've used it in a lot of my TikTok Get Ready With Me is. It's really great if you're wanting that glow, especially during the winter. Right now, these two are my favorite for my makeup base. So this is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is a date for the Charlotte Tilbury one. I... Honestly, can't tell a difference between them. I think that this one, I want to say this may be like $13, $14, if that. And the Charlotte Tilbury one is like double the price of that. I love using this because it still gives me that glow. And I personally use this one because it does help match my self tanner to my face. Then this is a Tarte Face Tape Foundation. If I'm putting on makeup, I am normally like a full coverage girl. If I don't want full coverage, honestly, I just would rather have a no makeup day. I don't really feel the need to put on all of this makeup and not have a good base. That's just how I am. If I don't use this, this is what I use for my no makeup makeup days. This is when I'm literally only doing a like sheer base. This is from Typology. This is their Tinted Serum. It's what it looks like and it's very clean ingredients. It's made in Paris. I love using this on days where I'm not shooting, I'm not filming. Maybe I'm just like running out to do some errands. I'm just hanging out with friends and I love mixing it with their glow drops. 
is what they look like. Even then, sometimes I'll use this in my everyday makeup, not with the tinted serum, but today it's a makeup day. So I'm gonna go in with these two. I'm gonna show you how I apply it. I first start off with my e.l.f. Halo Glow, and I normally put a couple of dollops. So as you can see, this is pretty heavy on the doe foot applicator. I'm going to just dot it in the middle of my forehead, my cheeks, my nose, normally on the side of my nose, and then right down there. That is normally all of the Halo Glow filter I will put on. I do mix it. You can either go ahead and blend this with your beauty blender or your foundation brush, but I like to go ahead and just put this right on top of it. Now this a little does go a long way. I'm trying to get closer so you can see the amount that I'm putting on. It really depends on what you're looking for. This doesn't have to be perfect. I never want my makeup to look too cakey. I feel like I definitely have had those moments and I don't really like that look. For today, I'm going to start off with my brush and I do like downward motions with my brush. It's kind of like almost tapping at the same time. I like to start off with this amount. That way I know that if I need to add more product, I can, but it's way easier to add product than take product away. I do blend it down my neck. Okay, so now you can see my skin. It's looking very glowy, very smooth. I know that a lot of people have different methods for their application with a brush. I just like kind of patting it and slightly kind of just painting it on. It literally is like your face is a canvas. If you're using a brush, in my opinion, it needs to be treated as such. Overall, I think that this is pretty great coverage for me. I really like the way that it looks, how it's glowing. I don't think I need to add any more. I will say if I splurge on any products, it will be. There's really two things or three things I would definitely splurge on if you're wanting to get more extensive makeup. A good foundation is very, very important because that is what your makeup clings onto. It's literally the first thing normally that you put on your face makeup wise. Another one is good eyeshadow. As long as you have like just one good high quality eyeshadow palette, I think that that is definitely the way to go. I never skimp out on eyeshadow normally. The last thing is lipstick. That is another thing that I definitely splurge on because that is what is on your lips. You want to make sure that it stays there. It's not just going to rub off. Definitely splurge on your lipstick. At this point, I do go in with my beauty blender and just really tap it into my face just to make sure everything is good. And you guessed it. We're going back in with the setting spray after I do my foundation. And I will tap it in one more time. I feel like this really just helps it really get into my skin. Definitely get a good makeup remover. I love using micellar water. It's always my go-to when it comes to makeup removal. Next up in my routine is my brows. So this is actually a new product that I have been obsessed with. This is such a great product, especially if you're first starting off doing your brows or you're wanting to do something different with your brows. This is from Jones Road Beauty and this you're gonna see when I start putting it on. This is amazing. This is the main thing I'm using. I'm also going in just to finish off my tails of my eyebrows with precisely my brow pencil from Benefit. This is what it looks like, like the OG. This honestly, truthfully isn't my favorite, but I am gonna be using it, so I wanted to share. This is the 24 hour brow setter by Benefit. I think that they are much better eyebrow setters than this. The e.l.f. one is my favorite favorite, um, and it's like three or four dollars, I think. This one just doesn't really set my brows that well, but I have nothing else, so I'm using this, but there is a way better dupe than this one. I brought out another light because it is getting so dark outside, but going to go ahead in with first the Jones Road and what it is, is this little spoolie. And all I do is I like brush it up. Now this does take a little bit of figuring out at first. At first I didn't really like this and then I figured out how to use it. So I do just like spike my brows. It does have like little clumps like that, which we'll fix in a minute, don't you worry. But really the main thing I do is just brush my brow hair up with this product. This little piece is driving me crazy. So these are what my brows 
vlogs look like before I've done anything else. They are kind of messy. As you can see, there's still like a little bit of clumped up product, but this is a really good base, at least in my opinion, and when I like to do my eyebrows. So that is when I normally go in with my Benefit, precisely my brow pencil, and kind of fix some of those pieces and the tail. I also need to wax my eyebrows, so if it's a little unmanaged right now, that is why. But I normally just like drag it down. So they look like this. One hack I do have for you is it's really important to have a concealer that's a little bit lighter. This is actually really lighter, but a little bit lighter than your skin color. This comes in handy for so many different things. So this is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear. This is a dupe for the Tarte Shape Tape, which I'll be using a little bit later, but this is just as good. Save your money. What I like to do is dot this right underneath my brow bone. And I take a concealer brush, a small little concealer brush. This is Morphe M224. And I like to cut out the bottom of my brow. So as you can see, my brows aren't perfect down here and there are like a little bit of like heavier spots. So what I do is just take a little bit of this and just kind of outlining the bottom of it. Really, it's harder for me to see in that camera. But I just outline the bottom of it and this also helps brighten up your brow bone, which is a place where you want to put highlighter, where you want it to be more light compared to everywhere else. This also is just a really creamy, great concealer in general. So this is what that looks like right now and I'm just gonna let it sit and do the other side. This is what that concealer looks like. So I do go in with my beauty blender and I just like tap it. I don't want it to be fully blended because I personally love eyeshadow. So I like doing it on myself, but you can see the difference between this one and this one now. I don't go into the brow really at all. I really just tap it. Sometimes I do kind of go up in between my brows to make sure they're not too, too harsh. I just blend until I see fit. So here are what the brows look like so far. Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. This is the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer. I feel like this has been around for so, so long. I'm sure a lot of you know this product and love it. If you don't want to have an eyeshadow primer, something that I have found is using the lighter shade concealer on your eye is a really great primer for your eyeshadow. For this video, I'm just going to use the primer just cause, but I normally just like tap it eyelids and I just blend it out with my fingers again this works just as good or like your regular concealer if that's what you have it really is a great base for your eyeshadow look so my eyeshadow ritual and routine has changed but i still like to do the same sort of thing so i'm going to be showing you the things i do this is what i've been doing pretty regularly i'm not going to do it in this video because it's really super simple i want to go more into detail of what i do that's a little bit more advanced like with an eyeshadow palette that's really not advanced at all this is my bronzer this is the hula bronzer by benefit and i love using this underneath my eyes and in my crease for when i'm not really wanting an eyeshadow look but i'm still wanting some dimension in my eyes this I still will be using today. This is the Cookie by Benefit, and I love using this highlighter on my brow bone and the inner part of my eye. I don't really prefer this as an actual highlighter though. I only like using it on my eyeballs. Another thing and a really good hack is if you're traveling, if you don't have an eyeshadow palette, having your bronzer and your blush can really help make an eyeshadow look. This one is my favorite. This is the Tarte Blushing Bride. That's what that color looks like. And if you just put this just a little bit kind of flared out on your eyes it can really just make you look just so like bright and bronzed and beautiful so that's a little hack but today I'm going to be using my Pat McGrath labs this is a palette that I got at TJ Maxx I did not pay full price for this I'm pretty sure you can still find this at TJ Maxx's like I still go to TJ Maxx and see these all the time this is the colors that we're working with so I like going in just for reference like you don't have to use the same exact eyeshadow palette I feel like that's what stopped me from doing makeup for so long when I was younger is I thought I had to have like all these expensive makeup products and you definitely don't there's definitely good dupes out there that's why I'm trying to share as much of my knowledge as possible because I learned how to do my makeup on YouTube and I'm just sharing and giving back into the 
YouTube community and for y'all. I really like using a light brown, this a little bit darker brown, and then this is like a really pretty champagne. You can see that's like a really pretty shimmer. I love a good shimmer on my lid. I think it really changes everything. So those are the colors that I'm going to be going into, but really if you just have a palette with a light brown, a dark brown, and then kind of like a pinky champagne, you'll be good to go for this look. First, starting off with my highlighter, I like going in with another little, I want to say this is another concealer brush, but I use it just for highlighter on my eyebrow. This is the Morphe M166. This is what it looks like. It is dip it right in there and apply it right on my brow bone. And it is so beautiful, this color. I'm obsessed. I left a lot of my eyeshadow palettes actually back in Alabama. I was like petrified of them breaking. So that's how I learned kind of like little different hacks. Just applying. You can already see that shimmer coming through. These are other two eye brushes that I love. This is the Morphe M441, and then this is the Morphe M433. The M433 is a little bit smaller. It's not as fluffy, where the 441 is like that really fluffy one. So normally I go in with the 433 first with the lighter brown. I tap it off. What I do is I normally start on the outside, do kind of like that, and then do windshield wiper motions back and forth right there so this helps get the product on your eye and like i was mentioning with the foundation it's a lot easier to add product than take it away and i'm literally just tapping into this just very lightly that will also depend on the eyeshadow that you go with but it's already adding that dimension into my eye. I'm really focusing this in on the outside corner and bringing it in. That's when I like to go in with my fluffy brush with no product on it. I just like doing little, I'm doing this, little circles over my eye. I do raise my eyebrow to get this done. And I just make sure this is really good and feathered out so it's not a harsh line. I'm not sure if you can see the difference between this eye that's not feathered out and this eye. It just makes it a little bit lighter. I go back and forth between the circles all the way around and windshield wiper. So that is the crease. If I wanna add a little bit darker, that's when I go in with the darker brown. Tap it off and I will basically start at like this point of my eye and kind of just drag it down, kind of going back and forth so you can see like where that is. Go a little up. I really just focus this in on the outside corner. I do not want this to overpower or turn into like a really dark smoky eye. Just want that a little bit on the corner. We're going to be blending that out with the larger poofy one in just a minute. Going back in with the fluffy brush. And it looks so beautiful. Here's another hack with that lighter concealer. I love using this as a base for when I do shimmers on my eyelid. I go back in with that Morphe M224, the concealer brush I was talking about. Go ahead and open this up, get a lot of the product off of that doe foot applicator. And what I do is I just like barely tap into that. What I do with this is I literally only focus it in right here. So you're seeing that product go on. You're literally just laying the foundation for that product. I don't go any deeper than this and I don't go any higher than this. It looks kind of janky. It's going to look good at the end. Again, tapping it just a little bit on there. I think a good mark to remember for this is like halfway. Like if you're looking in the mirror at your eye, like right where you're the middle of your pupil, I guess that is where I put this lighter concealer. So we have the base for the shimmer. Again, if you don't have an eyeshadow palette with you, I like putting highlighter on that part too. I normally do pack more of the lighter color on my eye. So this is the Morphe M124 this and it's like a little bitty brush dipping it right into that champagne color has that shimmer on it and i just like tap it on my eye 
and it really starts to show so well. And this is why I love splurging on good eyeshadows because eyeshadows will not do good if they're really, really cheap. I know makeup has come a long way. I have not really explored the cheaper eyeshadows because I've just been burned time and time again by them. But if you're looking for something to ask for for Christmas, I think a good eyeshadow palette is essential. You don't have to have a big one, just like a little small one. I also kind of do windshield wiper motions getting into that part of the crease. I don't really like it to go any higher than this. This is kind of what the eye makeup looks like now. You can kind of see, I like it to be pretty natural, as natural like as eyeshadow can be. To end out the eyeshadow look, I do like to take a little eyeliner. This is Tarte Double Take. I like this one because you have a pencil eyeliner and a liquid eyeliner in one, so it saves you space. That's what this one looks like, and I like to take a little tip. I do like doing liquid too, but normally for every day, not really. This, I don't even know what brush this is because this is just one that I got at TJ Maxx. This is just like an angled brush. What I like to do is like tap into this, like kind of in downward motions to get it on to the brush. See how it's on there? And I like doing a slight wing with this. So what I mean by that is literally this. I will start off and just do like a little tiny wing like that. And it's going to look kind of janky. It's not going to look perfect, but I like it because it gives me just a little bit of darker on my eye without it being too, too scary. Because I feel like dark colors can be really intimidating. After this, I do blend this out again with that big fluffy brush, which helps it look not so much like eyeliner, like you just have eyeliner on your eye, but it helps give that dimension. If you're wanting it to be even, just look in the mirror straight on. Like if you're the mirror straight on and just keep going and matching it up to either side. I do drag this a little bit onto that little corner. So as you can see, it's just like there. I don't really like that. That's why I blend it out. A little goes a long way. I'm like really digging in there, like doing circular motions in there with it. I don't even know if this is picking up on camera, but I have noticed a really big difference, especially with like, oh, I just put myself in the eyeball, especially with taking pictures that that really adds a lot of dimension to your eye look. I also do tight line. I think that's how, what you say, the on top of my waterline. Basically what I'm meaning is I will lift up my eye or you don't have to, you can literally sit here and do it like this. I have contacts, so I, when I don't lift my eye, this normally gets in my contact and it's really painful. So I just lift it up and this little line right next to your lashes, maybe this is your lash line, whatever. I will just use this pencil just to darken it up just a little, see the difference. Okay, the eyes pretty much done. Since doing pageants, I really like having liquid products instead of powder. I normally do the liquid first and then the powder on top. I know it seems kind of counterproductive, but it's just what works for me. So this is not my favorite, okay? There's better, cheaper things on the market. I'm just like at the very end of this and I don't want to go buy anything else. So this is what I'm showing you today. Sure, you've seen this on everyone's TikTok. This is the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. Again, there's cheaper options out there that are better. I'm also doing this by Mario blush stick. This is earthy pink, y'all. This is the best blush stick I have ever found in my life. It is so, so good. The next liquid product we'll be doing on top of that is this La Mercier liquid highlighter. There are a lot of different highlighters out there. I know that e.l.f. I think makes them now too. This is in peach bronze. Let's see the color on that. That's what this little little item looks like. So obviously the foundation has been on our face for a little bit. So what I like to do is just kind of dab where I'm about to be applying the makeup just to make sure it's not like too sitting there. Like sometimes it can get really dry. Well, at least my skin, it can get very dry, very fast. Like it'll just soak into your skin. So I like to do this just to kind of like prep it one more time before I put it on there. First start off with contour. And again, y'all, I'm at the very tail end of this. So it's like one of those like squeezy. <gasps> Oh shoot, actually, I think that's a lot. <laughs> actually, I know that's a lot. Okay, <laughs> bear with me. I like to do two little dots. 
two dots there one in the middle i do like putting this right at the bottom of my nose also like on the sides of my nose which is going to be hard <laughs> also like i said my face is a little bit rounder so i do like to oh gosh that's so much product i should not have squeezed that much out i'm just gonna kind of outline the chin and then do three little dabs on the cheek. I also like to do right underneath my lip and right there. Now I know y'all may be like, why is too much for me? Girl, don't have to do this. Just giving you some tips, okay? Go back in with the brush and I normally start from the bottom and move my way up. So I will just do like little circular motions all along my jawline. And I will drape it, like keep, just like keep doing the circular motions. All the way down, I like draping this all the way down my neck. Okay, now next part. Side to side, side to side. This one, down, the nose, side to side. It'll catch it. And I also like to, you know, like where your nose is right there, do like side side. Also, while we're on the nose, we're going to go ahead and do this. I like bringing this down. So you can see what we started with versus what just happened. Swipe it down. This is so hard not to do with the. I wish you were like right here, like right in front of me, but I can't film that way. It literally would be impossible for me to see what I'm doing. You can see how the product is just going in. Again, just up and down. It's all of that. Now the nose contour is tricky and I feel like it can be overdone very, very fast. I feel like I put too much product on my nose but we can fix it a little bit later. Now with the sides, I normally kind of pat and kind of drape. So first I pat it into my skin and that's when I start draping and I go towards my hairline. Oh, so that's so annoying. And like towards this side. Again, this is a lot of product that I did not expect to be putting on my face. Okay, now onto the other side, tap it. Make sure it's all good. And then you start draping. Now it's getting a little mucky down here. So I like taking my beauty blender and just kind of patting where it may be too much or a little bit too heavy. You don't want all of this right here, like where this beauty blender is to be dark. You want this to be a little bit lighter. You don't want your contour to go down that far. Same thing that I did with my cheeks, I'm going to be doing to my forehead. what the skin looks like very glowy very bronzy going in with my blush stick normally just do like a little swipe or two i normally am like a blush girly i like a little bit more blush i think it's also because i'm from the south and like blush like the more blush the better everything is Now I go in with my concealer before I do my liquid highlighter, just because if I do the highlighter first, normally it's overpowered by the concealer. So I showed you earlier, this is the Tarte Shape Tape. There's more on the market. You don't have to use this one. I just have it on hand. They also have a thicker formula if you don't want to have it as creamy. This is their creaseless concealer. Truthfully, it's too thick for me. I don't really like it, but if you do like a thicker consistency, that's a really good one. All I do is dab, dab, and then a little dab and dab on the side. I think that could add a little bit more. Now, if I am doing an eyeshadow look like I did, I like to take that little concealer brush and I do like swiping this up just a little because you do have, or at least I do, I am not very clean with my eyeshadow. I like to drag this concealer up. As you can see, it's like cleaning up some of where the darker color went because I don't want that all over right below my eyeball. So I just go in and slightly tap it and do it upwards. You can see it now. I go in between, I use my fingers, I use my beauty blender, I use my brush. Today I'm going just to be using my fingers and my beauty blender underneath my eye. I never rub, I only dab the concealer. Okay. 
Okay, another thing I do with my setting spray is spray the beauty blender and then dab it underneath my eyes. Y'all may be like, this is too much setting spray. I don't think there can ever be enough. I truthfully, sorry, it is rush hour right now. And so everyone is like stuck in traffic down there. This is like the only time I can hear things normally that I am right next to the window. Okay, so we have dabbed it. It looks beautiful. It looks clean. It looks chic. Now we're going in with that highlighter and like dabbing it on top of your cheekbone. Oh, that was a lot. Another thing I like doing is putting it in the middle of my nose. I love having like a little pink Rudolph nose. Go back in with my brush. Just kind of dab it just like we did everything else. And the base is looking so, so beautiful. I love these products so much. So now we're going to be baking. I don't bake for that long. And you may be like, what are you baking? Our face, girl. So this is the Laura Mercier Translucent Powder. This is my favorite. I think this is worth the splurge, to be honest. It's a loose powder. And I just dab some into the top. Like so. And I like using this little puff to help set it. I normally do underneath my eyes, my chin right here, and then normally along the sides right here. You'll see in just a minute. Also, before you do this, normally this will crease pretty quickly. That's why we're baking it so it doesn't crease. I go in like one more time right before I put this on my puff. Now we have the powder to really ensure that we're not getting those creases. heavily bake. I personally don't just like when it's my everyday makeup. And again, this isn't like every everyday. This is just like when I actually want to do makeup. While this is baking, that's when we're going back in with the brow gel that I showed you earlier. All I do with this is just brush it up. Like I feel like there's no product on here. That's the thing. Like if it had product on it when I brought it out, it would be fine. Maybe that worked. But I do like to set my brows, even if it's a product I really don't like. Put it down. brows all done did anyone else go through a phase where you wanted your brows like super skinny i feel like mine are still in recovery after that oh, gosh i let this sit on my face however long i want to depending on the day i feel like no more than like four minutes but i try and do things that i can while this is baking so I don't just completely like rub it off. Going to go ahead and curl my eyelashes. Any eyelash curler will work. Um, this is from Tarte, but I bought them from TJ Maxx. I bought them from Walmart, Target. They're all good. I feel like I've only had one that's not good. The Okay, what I will say about eyelash curlers is get one that's spring loaded. So see how like it's gonna like spring back? You want that. You don't want one of those that are like not spring loaded, or at least I don't. Just curling the lashes. When I do curl my lashes, I normally pulse it a little bit more when it's on my eyes and I normally curl them two times. I do love putting on false lashes and I get questions all the time on my false lashes. So I'm going to be putting them on today just because normally if I'm filming or like tonight we're having a date night, I will use false lashes. All throughout college, I use false lashes. I'm trying to see if I have a brand new pack. I'm going to be using leftover lashes. I normally get a few uses out of these lashes. This is what they look like. I buy them at Ulta and Target online. They come in a pack and these are my favorite ones. I do trim the outside. Unfortunately, I should have run out to grab some. I didn't know that I was out of like the new fresh ones. Normally I do cut them. You want to cut lashes to fit your eye shape. It's not going to be the same for every single person. And it gives you like a perfect flawless look. 
So now that it's been a few minutes, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my powder. This is from Tarte. It is Shape Tape. I have had plenty of other powders that are great. This is just what I have. And the brush I'm using is Sigma. It is apparently for setting powder. I use it for my all over powder. It's F12. That is what the little brush looks like. I just do like a little circle, tap it off. And I normally focus in more where I just set my face. Go all the way down. After I go over the places that I've set my face, I will go over my whole entire face after. Okay, also a hack I learned from a makeup artist is that if you have like these smile lines on your face, a way to help it not crease is to do and do it like put on your powder afterwards so like bizarre i don't really have them yet i mean i guess like i have facial expressions so like i do it anyways but if you wanted to know that trick there you go next up is all of the powder products so i do this lightly over so you can see it's still on my face like you can still see the bronzer the highlighter everything but i do like just to go like really set it in again using the hula bronzer that i talked about earlier going in with another benefit highlighter we're going to go in and highlight the inner corner of my eyeballs with this little cookie in just a minute but this is the tickle this is more of a pinky highlighter so you can see this is my favorite highlighter and I've been obsessed with this duo for cheeks. This is Sigma Blush Tiger Lily. Looks like that. And I like pairing it with the Dior Backstage Rose Glow in 001 Pink. Dior always has the prettiest packages. This looks intimidating. You're like, come on Barbie, let's go party. No, it's not that bright. Like it's really not that bad. This is a Firma. 103. I don't know what this is. I don't know how I got this. I just have this brush, but this is like a little contour or blush. I don't know. I like using blush brushes for contour. Basically, I just go, it's going to be hard because I have these hair rolled in, but just like back and forth. And I basically just touch up everywhere. I just put the cream contour. my nose I like to do down down so sorry about the traffic good and sassy also like to do it on my nose literally everywhere we just touched up next up is the blush i go in with the sigma one first and this is i literally have had this for like i think a decade this is from bh cosmetics i don't even know if they're still around this is when my dog chewed it up in high school um that tells you how long i've had this brush with the powder i do like to pat and kind of brush it up too. I think I may have just broken that. <laughs> She's still kicking. Now with the Dior. I also like to do just a little bit on my nose, kind of like the circular motions we were doing on our eyes. Do it right on the nose. So cute. Now for the inner corner of the eye, going back in with my little highlighter brush that I use, the Morphe M166 on my brow. Going ahead and going in and just doing it on the inner corner. I feel like this really brightens up an eye look and really just like brightens up your face when you have that little pop of shimmer. And it's even better because you probably already have highlighter. So you can just add that in. It really just changes the whole look. To finish up all my eyes, the last thing I'm going to be doing is taking my hula and also taking that little brush that I didn't have the name for. When I did the eyeliner, I'm going to take the bronzer and I'm going to do the bottom of my lashes. I don't like having eyeliner really on the bottom of my lashes. I do if it's like a bigger event or if I have a hair and makeup artist that's doing my makeup and like they're kind of in charge or like if it's for on stage, that's different. But I do like tapping this just along the bottom of my eyelashes at the bottom. It really just adds to dimension and it makes your makeup and eye look just look kind of complete. I know that bottom mascara can be kind of like, uh, I don't know like if it's for everyone. I think this is for everyone. I think everyone should be doing this to their bottom lashes. Like you can't tell me that doesn't look better. It's the little things. It's the little things in makeup that make you stand out and make your makeup look good. Now we're finally going in with the highlighter and... <laughs> 
I swear this is the last time I'm using the setting spray. I like to set my face first and then go in with the highlighter. This is literally a paintbrush. This is not even a makeup brush. This is a paintbrush. I don't even remember where I got it, like a supermarket. But anyways, we're going to be setting the face and then immediately after going after this, I only use this brush to highlight my cheekbones and then I use my finger to do my nose. We are almost fully ready for the evening and with the makeup routine, now we just have the lashes and then we have my lip products. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my lashes on off screen and I will come back to show you my lips. Okay, so the eyelashes are on and I normally, I talked about this a little earlier, I can get probably about five to six uses out of these eyelashes. This is a closer look. I don't have any mascara on. It is just the false lashes. These have been just like my go-to favorites. Just like making sure they're like all laid down. For mascara, it doesn't really matter what you use. I'm just using what I have. This is the Tarte Tartlet Tubing Mascara. And then this is the Laura Mercier Caviar Volume. I'm going to start with the Laura Mercier one. Also, y'all, these are press-on nails. I'll link them for you because I love them. I just put them on and it looks like I went to the salon. So I'm going to be... Just like lightly dabbing. I don't want it to be like too, too much, but just making sure it blends really nicely with my eyelashes. I think I'm going to do a TikTok on how I put on my false lashes because I feel like I could go like in depth on how I do it. So this is the side with the mascara and then the side without. are done and I do like doing bottom mascara I think it just like completes the look personally I know that not everyone likes it that's normally when I go in with the tartlet this is more of a rubber brush which means it'll separate your lashes more than giving you volume it'll just like separate them I don't like it to be too too heavy underneath my eyes so I just slightly touch it and this mascara does a really good job I like a lot of the Maybelline mascaras though. That's my favorite. Or is it L'Oreal? It's definitely L'Oreal. L'Oreal Sky High. That's such a good one. It's such a good dupe for a lot of them on the market. L'Oreal has the best mascaras. Hands down. Like for a drugstore, don't splurge on mascara. Don't do it if you don't want to. Now we're going in for the lips and my lips change just a little bit. This has been the combo that I have been doing lately. I will start with the Lip Cheat in Pillow Talk. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is what it looks like. This is the liner. And then I have been going in with these two products. This is Kylie Lips. Um, I've had this for so long. I don't even know if they make it anymore. Like this color. This is, I don't even know the color. It says 808. And it says Kylie, but I don't know if Kylie is the, the color. But that's what this one looks like. Then this is the Urban Decay Cuffed Up Liquid Lip Color. This is one that you're going to want to shake before you put on. It's like spray can or something. If I don't do this combo, I also like the Live It Up Charlotte Tilbury Lipstick. Really pretty kind of nudie pink color. And for the lip glosses, these are amazing. These are the e.l.f. lip oils. These, oh my goodness, these are good for those like no makeup makeup days as well as to put on over your lips. I like the clear one, but today I'm going to be using this one in the color Honey Talks. This is a really good dupe for the Dior lip oil. So we're just going to go ahead and line my lips. I do overline just like slightly, nothing like too serious. Liner, I go in with the Kylie. Since 
these are both matte. I like them to sit on my lips for a minute before I put on the lip oil. That way I know it's like matted on to my lips before I start putting anything else on it. So overall, this is the look so far. The only thing left is our lip oil. It's going to go ahead. Put that on. And there we go. I love this lip combo. I think it's like the perfect pink. That's not like bright, bright pink and it's not too nude. I think it complements a lot of different skin types. I've tried this combo on a lot of different of my friends and everyone loves this lip combo. So that is my everyday makeup routine when I decide to put on makeup. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna give you kind of like a little close up of everything. I know this was a longer video, but I definitely wanted this video to be very detailed and give you a little glimpse into some of my favorite products, favorite brands, things that I use. Let me know if you want any other sort of like makeup videos. I feel like I'm still trying to figure out my content post-grad. I feel like I've loved doing fashion things on my blog. I've loved doing more makeup on my TikTok. And I feel like my YouTube channel is more just like kind of everything, kind of just like a big melting pot of all of it. But I know I get questions on this look all the time. So Hopefully you found some new products. If you decided to try any of them, please, please DM me, comment down below. Let me know if you like any of these products, if you're like a religious like user of any of these products. If you've made it to this part of the video, you know what to do. Comment down the little lipstick emoji. I think that is perfect for this type of video. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to join the angel family, you can click that subscribe button also. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye.